Women of Devil's Island, or The Prigionieri delle Sola del Diavolo, is a 1962 Italian Women in Chains film. Devil's Island refers to a real-life notorious island penitentiary in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, where the French government could banish their undesirables to the other side of the world. Set on the eve of the French Revolution, Women of Devil's Island was directed by Domenico Paolella and stars Guy Madison, Michelle Mercier, and Marissa Belli. On a remote island off the coast of New Guinea, France has established a women's prison for prostitutes, thieves, anti-monarchists. The women are forced to pan for gold on the island, so the gold can be deposited in the king's coffers. An arrested noblewoman searches for her only living relative, a sister who has already been hardened by her time on the island. The sisters join an escape attempt, with a plan to grab some gold on the way out. The escapees are betrayed, and the noblewoman's sister dies in her arms. When things look their lowest, a new warden arrives to replace the cruel and lecherous one. But even he is not what he seems, and the women must marshal their wits to gain their vengeance and their freedom. Devil's Island was produced simultaneously with another project, Avenger of the Seven Seas. The two films would share the same location, boats, director, and much of the costumes, cast, and crew, essentially providing two film productions on one budget. All indications are that Avenger of the Seven Seas is a superior film, with everything you'd expect from a swashbuckler movie. So why are we talking about Women of Devil's Island? Because Devil's Island mashes up the swashbuckler film with the Women in Prison film. Women in Prison films have been around since the talkies. Stories promising a glimpse of women outside of society's rules and roles, incarcerated and yet free, to reveal themselves as filmmakers imagine such women to be. Early women in prison films positioned themselves as cautionary tales. As cinema began to challenge the status quo, some filmmakers began to lean into the more transgressive possibilities. Women of Devil's Island is on the safer side of these women in prison films, with only about half of the tropes that grindhouse audiences will come to expect. Any sexual deviance or abuse is only suggested, experienced off-screen. There's no lesbianism, no catfights, no nudity. It's ready for syndicated television programming, which is how the movie premiered in the U.S. in 1964. What it does have is an abundance of beautiful women in peril, struggling through harsh environs and cruel masters, fighting for survival and some kind of dignity. It's not Orange is the New Black or anything like that. There's no time for feminist introspection, just enough backstory to help tell the women apart. Anyway, when the pirates show up after minute 47, the movie begins to deliver the sea epic that its fraternal twin was allowed to be, with gunfights, sword fights, death, and explosions. And in B-movie tradition, it feels like they're using hand-me-downs from an A-picture. Also typical for a B-picture, the story beats are basic, the characters are stock, and the actors don't bring anything extra to the performances, but they do play the parts well enough. Director Domenico Paolella first made his mark after World War II, directing musicals and comedies. But his knack for historical action flicks on a budget kept him busy in the 60s, be it swashbucklers or sword and sandal flicks. Although he did not return to the women in prison subgenre, he made two notable nunsploitation films in the 70s, The Nun and the Devil and Story of a Cloistered Nun. Guy Madison was one of the few leads in Devil's Island that didn't also appear in Avenger of the Seven Seas. In the 1950s, Madison became one of America's first TV stars, with the lead role in a six-season run of Wild Bill Hickok. After the show's cancellation, he moved to Europe for more acting opportunities, in England, in Germany, and of course Italy. Michelle Mercier was still looking for her star-making turn when she was cast as the ingenue in Devil's Island but it was another turn in petticoats that would make her a star in 1964's Angelique. Based on the series of novels about a young noblewoman also navigating the chaos of the French Revolution era, the Angelique films would make Mercier a sex symbol across the continent. She would enjoy the success and regret the typecasting. Film students might also recognize her from her minor role in the Francois Truffaut film Shoot the Piano Player. Women of Devil's Island won't satisfy Grindhouse Women in Prison fans. It's far too genteel a film. This is more like the bodice ripper paperback novels that Harlequin popularized in the 70s, but still a movie safe enough for TV standards. A well-dressed film with a straightforward story. Some viewers may not find enough to get lost in, 
but it's good enough to clean the house too, or watch as you go to bed. Or maybe if you're in the mood for an old school adventure tale about a women's hell in an island paradise. <laughs>